SECTF competition, which we might have hosted, just throwing that out there. Um, she's passionate about protecting kids on online through the Innocent Lives Foundation in her fundraising efforts, but also determined to get more young humans involved in every aspect of hacking to teach these critical skills to the next generation of hackers. Um, if you're interested in following her, you can follow her on Twitter at Alif Dennis, that's spelled A-L-E-T-H-E-D-E-N-I-S. Um, and without further ado, I present to you Miss Alif Dennis. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and attempt to share my slides. Um, all right. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about, can everyone see my slides? Yes, there we go. All right. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about online scammers, especially those that come to us through social media. And we're going to talk about an incident where I confronted one of these people and uh, kind of dissect that and talk about the social engineering behind their tactics. So advanced slide. Um, so first we're gonna talk a little bit about the narrative. And then as we go through the narrative of that scamming attack um, and how I was able to defend against that and kind of take them to task, uh, then we'll discuss closing um, as well as some of the the social engineering and psychology behind these types of attacks and how you can avoid them. Um, and let's get right into it. So you already heard my bio. So I just wanted to share a couple pictures of uh, me with some folks who contributed to this success in a huge way. Uh, Chris Hadnagy, Whitney Maxwell, and Chris Kirsch, um, all amazing individuals who you should absolutely follow on the social medias. Um, I am, I would say, most proud of the fact that I've been able to contribute to the Innocent Lives Foundation in a really big way the last couple of years. Um, I just recently did a workshop at B-Sides Orlando that raised over $2,800 for the ILF through registrations for that workshop. Um, and I would highly encourage you to check them out. They essentially identify online predators and then give those dossiers of information on those individuals to law enforcement so that they can take those people and bring them to justice. Um, and so they don't impact the lives of kids online. All right, so quick disclaimer. And I, and I saw somebody in the chat say, isn't hacking illegal? That is a very broad, broad statement. Um, there are many, many different types of hacking. You can absolutely hack people in the context of a signed SOW with a, an engagement with a company. I am currently hacking several companies <laughs> through phishing emails because they asked me to. Um, so that's something that you should absolutely keep in mind. Do not do bad things. Do not break the law. And there are so many resources online right now that you can use to learn how to uh, acquire the skills of hacking. Um, and I can absolutely share those with you if you're interested. Please don't get in trouble by breaking the law and don't hack the host. You may learn stuff about our hosts today. You may learn stuff about me today that would enable you to compromise us. Please be mindful of that and understand that Critical Insight, my employer, does not encourage anyone, uh, and neither do I, to reproduce or replicate what I've done in this talk. Um, they also may or may not share any of my views and opinions. And here we go. So here's essentially the setup. I had someone that approached me in my DMs on Instagram and they offered me $3,000 a week. I, I know, okay, I got the initial tweet wrong. Everybody and their mom let me know, I'm aware. So it's crossed out there. <laughs> but they wanted to be my sugar daddy and give me three grand a week. So I thought, you know, this is pretty hilarious. I literally have in my bio on Instagram who I am and what I do. Um, so I tweeted about it and I was like, you know what? Shall we play a game? <laughs> so I decided I would essentially out this person as a fraud. And I went ahead and I used the images that they were sharing on their Instagram account to find the actual owner of these pictures. So I did a Google image search, used the pictures that they were sharing on their fake Instagram profile that they'd stolen from this individual and figured out that Scott Yates was the actual person who owned the images and had a completely separate account. So it was very likely that this guy was not Scott Yates. 
Um, so I decided I would engage with this person and just try to see if I could understand more about what their goals were, what they were going to do to try to manipulate me, and then use this experience to educate folks on how they can avoid these types of scams. So first, I had to figure out if this person was going to play ball. Um, I asked, what does this look like exactly? Like, what do you expect from me to give me $3,000 a week? That's kind of a lot of money for just some friendly conversation. So he took a little while to respond. It actually took like a day for him to get back to me. And uh, initially he wanted to know about whether or not I was married and it seemed like I was busy. And I think he was trying to escalate the timeline there going, oh, you must be too busy for me. And then kind of removing the opportunity slightly, pulling back so that I would then leap into trying to you know, get this money out of him. Um, so he says he works for a trucking company and that's important later on, but he says he works for a trucking company and that he owns a grocery store and inherited a car auction company. Then he starts laying the compliments on, oh, you're so beautiful. Are you married? Do you have kids? You know, it seems like you're busy. Text me when you can. Lovely. So he's already using pet names to try to build rapport with me, which is kind of gross, but here we go. So I said, yeah, I'm just super busy at work. And I will tell you, I didn't lie at any point during this conversation. And I was very careful about that because this is my real name on my real Instagram account. Everything is legit. Um, and so I didn't really want to poke the bear to the point where he would want to retaliate against me. Um, and I say he only because that is the avatar of this person. It could be a, a number of different genders, who knows, a number of different people, in fact. Um, so we're just going to say he for the sake of ease based on the profile that they created. So now I, I legitimately had to respect some of the skills there. And I decided we should probably break this down from a social engineering perspective as we go through and see how this person is going to try to manipulate me to do what they want me to do. He's looking for lonely people that need money. He's already dangled the bait. And now he's trying to figure out if I'm married or if I have kids. Um, and sort out whether or not I'm going to be easy to manipulate into this scheme, whatever that scheme is. At this point, I didn't know. Um, he also told me what he does to see if I have a job and if I earn money. So if I was, you know, young and work somewhere that maybe wasn't paying more than, say, minimum wage, that's going to be somebody that's a lot more vulnerable to this type of attack, somebody who can be easily incentivized by a large or significant amount of money, especially on a regular, regular basis. Um, so he talks a little bit about going to the gym and then says that he's in the military at a base in Tennessee and that he's been there for six months um, and that he's glad to talk to me because I seem amazing. So again, he's trying to build rapport by endearing himself to me. He says he's got a lot of ladies out there that want to be his sugar baby, but after the first payment, they all just, you know, turn into jerks <laughs> is essentially what he was getting at. So he wanted to make sure that I would not turn into a jerk, which I thought was pretty hilarious. Um, so I said, I'm still stuck at work and, you know, I'm so sorry you've had such a bad experience with all your sugar babies. That sounds so tough. And then I asked him what kind of hobbies he was into. And I want to stress like, this guy is really bad at this because he's only talking about himself, which I find hilarious. And so he, you know, I, at one point I'm like, Oh God, am I being mean? Like, is this a real person? I had a couple of people that actually messaged me via direct message. And they're like, I don't think this is a scam. This guy's for real. You need to be careful. You could be like completely destroying somebody's sense of self and like, you know, ripping them apart publicly on Twitter. And I'm like, I don't really think that this is a real person. He's already said I own three companies and then said I'm in the military. That does not compute at all. Um, so again, I was like, do I feel bad that I'm about to completely fillet this guy online? Like I did take a moment and I was like, is this ethical? Is this okay for me to do? And I was like, you know, the images are, are fake. They're not his. 
He's already said some things that absolutely do not add up. This has all the earmarks of a scam just from the money, like the too good to be true aspect of it. So he starts talking about his hobbies and all the stuff he's into and that he's a generally optimistic person with a good sense of humor, fairly easygoing. Like he's really trying to sell himself as boyfriend material pretty hard, which I don't understand at all. Because if you're just going to pay for the company and the time and nudes, whatever, why on earth would I need to like you? (laughs) Why are you trying to sell yourself to me? Um, So then he starts talking about, you know, how relationships should work and people contributing to them together. And then asked me about me. And so then it was like, it kind of got weird. He's like, wait a second, we should we should do this on WhatsApp. So let's, let's move the conversation out of Instagram direct messages. And he wants me to take the conversation away from Instagram and use a direct messaging platform that has like no social media and nothing else attached to it. Because he said something about he wanted to have direct access to the messages and not have to log into Instagram to check him. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure they all come to your phone the same way, bro. But I'm like, this feels like he's trying to set me up for some kind of a payment scheme scenario. Um, And he's definitely leveraging some of the things that a lot of predators do, like flattery and then trying to isolate the conversation away from other influences. Um, Taking the conversation over to WhatsApp is definitely something that would allow him to potentially get my phone number. And so that's kind of important if he was going to use the phone number to collect information on me. So I said, I'm pretty chill too, and that I'm really getting into fitness right now, which is kind of true. And I'm hoping to get to visit the beach this year, just random junk. Uh, But hey, not a lie. Uh, The pandemic has made that tough. And I enjoy animals and movies, nothing like super personal, but I wanted to see if he would kind of share more. Um, And I said, I don't have WhatsApp. I heard something about it not being safe since Facebook bought it. Have you heard that? And he just said, no, (laughs) which I thought was kind of hilarious. He said, I use it personally. I want to talk to only you on there. Right. Only me because I'm special. And uh, he'd love to have only me on there. So it won't bother him to have to go on Instagram to talk to me privately. And I kind of like abandoned the conversation for a little while because I was working. Um, So he's like, hello, (laughs) because now he's trying to escalate things because he's like, I've got one on the hook, but I'm having trouble closing the deal. So I uh, said, sure, let me let me uh, figure out how to do WhatsApp. He'd already given me the phone number. And so I was like, he's trying to push and apply pressure so that I will not leave this conversation before I do something stupid. And he's trying to leverage the money and building rapport and layering me with compliments to get me to give him personal information. Um, So he's trying to create an artificial time constraint. He wants me talking only to him. He also wants uh, to get me into another platform and get my direct phone number. So I took the number that he gave me to add him on WhatsApp and I put that into the free carrier lookup tool. And I determined that his number came from not a carrier like you would expect, like T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T, something like that is what I would expect from somebody who was in Tennessee. Um, But actually a mobile phone number that was provided by a service called TextMe. Does not seem legit at all. So at this point, I'm like, yeah, I don't feel bad about this at all. This guy is stealing pictures from other people. He's obviously using a number from a text messaging service. Nobody does that unless they're trying to hide something. So at this point, (laughs) he starts calling me love. And I was like, oh, now I'm blushing (laughs) the L word so soon. Um, (laughs) And then I was like, where TF is my burner phone? (laughs) Like I couldn't find the phone. And then I needed to find a SIM card for a seven day trial. Um, Because what I do is I use burner devices, which are essentially old uh, devices that I purchase on eBay. Like this one used to be, it used to belong to a wireless phone store. You can tell the security thing is still kind of stuck on the back there. 
Um, so this is the burner device I used for this. It is the slowest phone on the face of the freaking planet, but it did the job. Um, so I got a, a SIM card from T-Mobile. We'll talk a little bit about that later. But at this point, he's already layering on the love. He wants me to know, or he wants to know when I get off of work. He wants to know if he can have my number so that he can text me. And then uh, he wants me to set the app up. And he's, he was kind of getting a little bit frustrated. And he's all be safe out there. <laughs> anyway, so at this point, I abandoned the conversation because I'm like, I need to find the phone. I need to set up the phone. And I don't really want to talk to him anymore because I'm going to have to delay, 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 delay until I get the SIM card set up. So I kind of abandoned the conversation again for like overnight. So then he starts sending me messages on Instagram and liking like every picture <laughs> that I had on Instagram <laughs> to kind of get my attention. And then he's like, uh, what did he say? Um, all right, darling, I'm going to be waiting for your next text before bed. Can't wait to see more beautiful pictures of yours. And I'm going to be sending you mine too. And I was like, Ew. <laughs> so he's layering on the compliments again and he's trying to endear himself to me and he's trying to stay in my universe by engaging with my content online. And let's see what else was I learning at this point? I think we just talked about the fact that he could technically be any gender. So I read all the messages and I left them read so he could see that I saw them and read them um, and then didn't respond on purpose. Uh, tomorrow, the day after, I was going to be super unsure about this whole thing and kind of position myself as, oh, I don't know what to do. This is so crazy. I've never done anything like this before. So then I expected him to try to incentivize me and apply a little bit of pressure to influence me to cooperate by assuring me that it's fine and he cares. And here we go. So the next morning, he approached me. So he's all, good morning, sunshine. And I'm like, hey, sorry, I disappeared. I had a really stressful day, which I did. That day was not good. Received an unexpected bill, very bad. And I'm pretty stressed out at work. How was your night? Um, so at this point, I was like, you know, I'm just going to go for the super shy, naive girl thing and just be like, oh, I'm stressed. Money is hard. I've got this massive bill. It really was a massive bill. And, uh, you know, see if he'll apply pressure and the money thing comes up again. So at this point, I was like, do I feel bad? Like, again, let's just check my ethics here. I say I'm a cyber risk and infosec consultant on the profile through which he contacted me. And I say I'm best known for winning a black badge for a social engineering competition. No, I don't feel bad. He should have done his homework. So at this point, I needed a sock puppet, which is a fake profile for me on my phone, just the phone number. And so that's why we use the burner SIM. This person had created a sock puppet account on Instagram to use for the purposes of sucking people into this scam. So I covered the child's face because I think that's pretty disgusting. But this sock puppet that had approached me was even uploading stories to the fake Instagram profile using the content that was shared by the original owner, the actual Scott Yates. So he was lifting this person's stories and posting them to the fake account, uh, pictures of this guy's kids. And then his, you'll see a little bit later, but his WhatsApp avatar was a picture of this guy's kid. So uh, if you wanna learn more about alias accounts, fake social media accounts, sock puppets, whatever you call them. I call them research accounts. They kind of help to air gap you from the stuff that you're researching. Um, you can check out that link and I can share it also after the fact. But if you just Google search an evening with the Puppet Masters, a discussion on alternate social media accounts, you will easily find that video where we talk about um, account creation and keeping your sock puppets alive. And they come in handy. But this guy actually did a pretty impressive job. He was doing stories. He was uploading content every day. He was uh, active on the platform. If I wasn't keenly aware and didn't reverse image search that uh, set of pictures, I probably would have thought that this was a legitimate account. So he's trying to apply pressure by insinuating that he will be done with me if I play games and I'm unwilling to move to WhatsApp and give him my number. Time to use a burner. But first, here you go, a-hole. <laughs> Try to figure out if I'm happy or no longer into it if you have kids. Uh, so he was like, 
uh, I sent you my number. You can text me there when you like, because I don't understand why you've been nervous about it. It's okay if you want me to leave. Just don't play games with me. That's all pretty. And I promise to take care of anything you want. So it was like, I saw in your story, you have kids. So this is where stuff gets strange. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, lost his mom when she had the baby. Long story, LOL. Who the F says LOL after they talk about their baby mama dying during childbirth? Seriously. So he goes right from the LOL, my baby mama died, to I'm going to send you some pictures on the app and you're going to, so can we more about, can you know more about me and we can talk on how, oh God, the English and the grammar was driving me nuts, man. It was literally driving me insane. I'm like, you are not in the US military in Tennessee, bro. Um, so then he starts talking about this weekly allowance thing. He's already trying to talk about the money. Like, if your baby mama died and you're trying to build rapport with someone, now is not the time to talk about money. So burner sim activated. I got the burner phone up and running and I uh, was able to reach out to the guy. But first I found the account that he was impersonating, like the actual guy, and I messaged him. And then I saw in this guy's stories that having his account impersonated was kind of a normal thing for him like it happens a lot there's a bunch there were people that were telling him hey somebody just contacted me claiming to be your dad there were people like actively telling this guy that he was being impersonated by several different accounts and then I just did a quick Instagram search to see how many accounts were impersonating the guy and it was something like 10 um, at any given time I'm sure this guy is dealing with this on a regular basis so long story short <laughs> Pick a pin number for your burner phone that you can remember. <laughs> I ended up locking myself out of the device and I had to re like scratch it and then reinstall and set up a whole new account. So anyway, recovered the device for the 87 millionth time, activated the seven month free trial or the seven day free trial, and then got to business in WhatsApp. So uh, let's see what slide am I on. Okay, I'm on time. Uh, so. I feigned lack of technical ability because I wanted him to help me. So I was asking for help so that he could feel like this was an opportunity to build rapport and he completely missed the boat. Um, so I was like, hey, did I even figure this out right? But he's like, hello. <laughs> I'm like, cool, missed the boat on that one, Charlie. So I was like, hey, so then he sends me a picture of himself. And uh I said, oh, his name's Lebrun. <laughs> like his name changed halfway through this, the spelling. And so it was like, so is your name Lebron? And he's like, no, my real name is Lebrun. And I was like, where are you from? And he'd asked for a picture of me or something. So I sent him a picture and I was like, you know, here's just a picture. And I was like, are you worried it's not really me? And he's like, you look amazing, Rose. And he's like, no, like he's not worried. And then he goes into like his fake backstory. I'm from, I'm from Germany. Dad is from Germany and mom is a native American. WTF, I didn't ask you, bro. <laughs> he's like, what about you? And I was like, I'm a mutt, live in California. Not sure where I'm from really, which is true. Um, and he's like, what are you up to at the moment? How old are you? And I'm like, whoa, bro. <laughs> I was like, just working, <laughs> feels like that's all I do. And he's like, me too, LOL, thought you were in the military. Kind of forward to ask a woman her age, anyone in the United States who's, especially somebody who's in the military and like active duty age would know you don't ask a woman her age. It's freaking rude. I don't care. Like I'm closing in on 40. I don't care if people know that. But I wanted to point out the faux pas that he made, which was you don't ask a woman her age that's not a good look for anyone who's trying to build rapport. So he's double checking to see how old I am and if I'm single and I'm not responding to either one of those questions. I actually try not to lie at all since it's my real name and it's really me. So you can read some of these messages if you want, but essentially we talked a little about a little, little bit about the kid and uh, some stuff about him, more about him, all kinds of stuff about him. So he's definitely trying to figure out and see if I'm messing with it. 
and you know spoiler alert i absolutely most definitely am um but i thought it was kind of cute that he wanted to know some of the things that he asked but he really wasn't trying to close the deal like i'd been waiting around at this point for like three days for this dude like what's the scam um so at this point he's talking about how he lives in phoenix but he's currently on a military base he's got a gym you know like all this crazy stuff and then i was like i thought you had a kid and he's like yeah the kid stays with mom at the moment and a lot of people were like i thought the mom was dead and i'm like i'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt maybe he's talking about his mom like his kid is with his grandma is what his story was but yeah the mom's dead and i told you already you look responsible and i was like uh yeah i'm not comfortable with this what's going on and he was doing a really bad job at trying to reassure me that things were okay and then he was talking smack about all these other women on Instagram that had used him and manipulated him. And again, he's like dancing around the point so hard. Like whoever trained this guy was bad. <laughs> he's definitely not good at this job. So kind of failure to launch. <laughs> I got bored. Uh, let's throw a wild card. I'm too tired to redact the stuff. Go report his account on Instagram. So I went to go try to report the account and it was like, is this impersonating a person you know? And I was like, sure. And I was like, is it impersonating a celebrity? Sure, because I mean, the Scott Yates guy has a pretty big following. Nope, I could only flag a celebrity being impersonated if their account was verified. And uh, actual Scott Yates' account is not verified. So he's, he's failing to like get this off the ground. He is not closing the deal. He's not asking for the sale, so to speak. Um, and it's, it's dragging this thing out way long. He's completely failed at escalating the timeline or applying any artificial time constraints. Like, hey, I gotta get your, you know, whatever it is before the end of the week, if you wanna get paid, like there's nothing here. Like he's just blathering on. And I was getting a little frustrated because I'm like, dude, let's go. <laughs> so he failed to build trust and rapport big time. Everything was very surface level and like immature in my opinion. Um, he's using compliments and he's not really like stylizing this experience for me. He, he's not tailoring any of the conversation to me. He's done no research on who I am clearly. And he's really not trying to learn about me. If you want to build rapport with people, it is not about you. <laughs> like ever it's about them you ask them questions about them you let them talk about themselves you compliment what they like have think and feel and you make yourself secondary to the conversation if you want to build rapport you're talking to people about their priorities their goals you're seeking their thoughts and opinions you want to you know essentially make the entire conversation about them and get their you know endorphins going and their brain firing all the happy juice because they get to talk about themselves and this guy really really failed at doing that so he's likely working on dozens of different people at this point i was like this experience is so like cookie cutter and it's so um like broken in different places it's not really a straight line it's just kind of dancing all over the place so i figure I may be dealing with multiple people or I may be dealing with somebody who's just completely overwhelmed and they're trying to, to tackle too many of these scamming attempts at one time and they can't remember what they said and didn't say. So <laughs> the conversation really started losing steam and I was like thoroughly underwhelmed. Um, but it got to the point where I was just kind of like, how do these, you know, sugar daddy sugar baby things work because he hadn't told me yet which i thought was crazy like you're trying to sell me on this relationship so that you can give me money like you've never talked about what it is that happens here and so i was like trying to get him to give me the details and uh he's like i just need your loyalty and you know all of these other chicks cheat on me and like all this lame stuff and i was like okay well you know, I need a picture of you and I need this and I need that. So he sent a picture. And again, it was something he lifted from the real Scott Yates. <laughs> and at this point I was like, I'm gonna throw some gasoline on this thing. <laughs> 
So I was like, hey, Scott, are you there? <laughs> but to LeBron. And he's all, hey, babe, how are you doing today? And then he realized I called him Scott. And he's all, no one's ever called me that before. Where'd you come up with that? And I was all, you said this was a new account. I found one with all the same pictures as yours. And it says your name is Scott. You said you didn't want somebody who lied to you. And I'm starting to feel like you're the one who's being dishonest. Like when I asked you about your real name, are you married? And is this a spam account? I was kind of accusing him of being an adulterer. And he said, uh, I never knew you could find out till I am out of here. That's an account I use before I get to the base. I have to secure my identity. That's why I changed my profile. This is a ginormous red flag because what he's saying is, I can't use social media on the base. So that's my profile from before. This is my profile now because I can't use social media when I'm on the base. That's important. Um, my real name is Lebrun Scotty Yates. So he clearly doesn't understand how American names work. Like first name, last name. He's just kind of like, and he's trying to dig himself out of this hole. And I'm like, all right, well, how come you're updating both accounts still? How come both accounts have update, up-to-date posts and stories and everything else? Like, I feel like you're stringing me along. And then he gives me like the unimpressed face. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me, bro? Like, that's what you've got to defend yourself? Like, he didn't even try to defend himself. And I'm like, send me a selfie if it's really you, please. And he's all, till I'm out of here, meaning the military base. And by the way, my name is on both accounts. LeBron ain't on both accounts. And I said, okay. <coughs> he, he says, I'm not active on the account. Uh, I was like, okay, so what's the scam? Because you aren't Scott Yates. You, were you going to ask for my bank details? Make a wire, make me wire you money? What's the deal? I'm genuinely curious. Like at this point, I'm like, just, I'm going to say whatever I think the scam is to try to get him to tell me what it actually is. And I'm using a social engineering or psychology principle against him here, hoping that he will not be able to resist correcting me if I'm wrong. Um, and again, he gives me just the unimpressed face. And I'm like, what? And he's all, I don't really know what to say. I'm all, yeah, because you're lying and you've been caught or because you're bad at this. <laughs> and he's like, it seems like you're having doubt. You aren't talking to the real me. No kidding. Sounds weird. And I think I explained. So he thinks he's fully explained who he is and he's totally confident that this is fine. It's okay if you don't believe me, LOL, because I can't get out of here right now because I want to prove myself to you. I'm real. So he's saying he can't get out of the military base. And I'm like, bruh, you're texting me right now. So I'm supposed to trust you after you lied about your name. Meanwhile, Scott Yates updated his account with that sweatshirt hoodie selfie you sent me on March 14th. And he uploaded a new selfie three hours ago. So I call bullshit on you not having access to your own account. And he's all, all right, go on. And I'm like, <laughs> sure, let's do that. <laughs> I said, you need to profile your targets a bit better. And he's like, what does that mean? If you don't believe me, go on and talk to the account then. I said, I am. He said, you're an imposter, the real Scott Yates, that this stuff happens to him all the time, that you're a scammer. I just don't understand why you'd promise $3,000 a week and never try to close the deal. What were you waiting for? You're focused on all the wrong things. <laughs> Uh, you tried to do what you tried to do to me. I teach other people how to do for a living. <laughs> and at this point, he's like thoroughly confused. I can tell. So now he's like a different person. I think at some point this changed because I said, spill it. What's the play? Maybe I can help you for next time. I'm trying to say I'll help you do this better to see if he'll tell me what the heck the scam is. He's all, sorry, I just opened the account because I need a sugar baby. You can send me your driver's license and social security number. What? <laughs> so I can add you to my weekly payment roll. 
payroll is what we call that in this country, or you keep doubting if I'm the one in the pick. Yeah, I'm going to keep doubting it, bro. So this is an identity theft scam then? Yeah. Uh, so I don't believe you are who you say you are. I am not going to change my mind. You live in India? <laughs> and he's all, no, Korea, but I'm from China. So bam, like I, I got it to work. I told him something wrong. He could not resist correcting me. So he admits that he's in Korea and that's where he's running the scam from, but that he's originally from China. I said, oh, that makes sense. You have great English. So now I'm complimenting him because I want him to keep talking to me. And he's all, thanks, LOL. So I didn't just ask where he was. I suggested a common option for where a lot of these types of scams originate. Um, and I wanted him to correct me if I was wrong or just have an easy way to say yes. Like if he was there, it was easy for him to say yes, rather than where are you? I'm making it super easy. So it's like a knee jerk reaction. I get the answer one way or the other. Um, this is something that you can use and I will dare you to do it later today but you can test this theory by asking somebody what's their birthday. Like your birthday's in August, right? And I swear they will say, no, it's in May or whatever. And you just mentally corrected me and your internal monologue was like, no, it's in May. You just corrected me again. So this is something that you can use with anybody to kind of test this theory. Um, but if you give somebody a way that they can correct you, they will give you the information that they want, that you want to gain from them pretty much 95% of the time, unless they're really keenly aware of this tactic. They just can't help it. So here's where we are right now. I gave him a tip. Um, I told him that he needs to be mindful of pronouns because he was mixing up he and she, and those are very important in English for it to sound natural and normal and like you are from here. Um, so I asked him using another false statement. I said, that's weird that you can access social media from North Korea. I know, okay, I know what he said for real, but I wanted to see if he would give me more details about where he was because he said, no, Korea. Um, and I was like, isn't the internet blocked there? <laughs> but anyway, he didn't bite. And at this point, he kind of abandoned the conversation. So the following day, I was like, let's poke this bear again. So I reached out and he's like, hey. And I was like, hey, friend, how's your day at work going? Great. How are you? Pretty good. Doing some meal prep today and shipping some orders. All right. Nice. Uh, what are you up to this weekend? Anything fun? Not much. Staying indoors. I said, how come? He's all, I don't know. It's really hot here outside, so I figured it might be there too. I wanted him to tell me if it was hot or cold there. I remembered he said he was from Arizona, but that he was in Milan, Tennessee on a military base, but I wanna see if he is him and remembers what I said or if this is somebody else. He took a long time to respond and eventually correct himself. Once I asked if he was in Glendale currently, let's play along and bait the hook. So. I said, it's really hot here. What state are you in again, Arizona? Because he said he was in Tennessee and I wanted to see. So he corrected me and said, nope, I stay in Glendale with my family. I said, are you there now? He said, I'm in Milan, Tennessee, military base. So he backtracked and then corrected himself. I said, oh, that's right. It's going to, uh, I was going to say, pretty sure it's over a hundred in Arizona right now. <laughs> So I feel silly asking, but how does the sugar baby thing work? Never done anything like this before, which is true. So we moved on with new person and he's like, let me know when you want me to add you to my weekly payment. So once you being honest and genuine with me, we have a deal. How do I know I can trust you? Seems like a deal too good to be true. And he said, and it's your wish if you want to send me some nude pics, that escalated quickly, or videos just to keep me alive. And I'd love that. And I'm like, gross. And so I said, no, I'm blushing. You'll keep them to yourself? <laughs> I'm sure. I pay some of my sugar babies $3,000 some years back because they made me happy, but end up effing up. I said $3,000 a month because I wanted to double check. They said a week in the beginning. 
so I'm playing kind of I'm playing kind of like having disappointed you because I want him to jump back into this thing. Um, and I was like, well, why are you so depressed, lonely? And he's like, eh. and I was like, did I make you mad? And he said, just because I'm on base at the moment, not at all love. Can you send me one more cute pictures of yours? Yeah. So I sent him a picture, note the DEF CON t-shirt, no makeup, just chilling at home watching TV. Have you ever watched Burn Notice? <laughs> He did not pick up on that at all because he says no. <laughs> so he like completely lost the point of all of what I shared with him. And he's just like blinded by the tattoo. Um, and he's like, no, I want you to know I don't need your bank information or money because you can get money from me. And I'm not the type. All you just have to do, make a selfie to verify your face before adding you to my weekly payroll. It's so hard for me to read this because it's so bad. Um, so he's like, nope, have never watched that show, but nice tattoo. So now he thinks that I'm on the hook again and he wants to talk. Probably why they switched from Instagram to WhatsApp to get a verbal line of communication going. He wants to actually speak to me on the phone. And at this point I was like, I'm drawing the line. Um, I was really curious and I was kind of tempted to do the phone call because obviously this is not my actual number. Um, but it felt super uncomfortable, but I wanted to hear if he had an accent because that would have been like level a thousand hilarious. Um, especially since he's from Germany, right? So I did not do the call. Um, but I wanted to kind of catch everyone up. It took like three or four days, this last part. Um, I don't recall. It just stretched out so long because I kept hitting back the same WhatsApp number with a new message and seeing if I could get a new person and maybe that person would be better at their job. Maybe I could learn more about what the scam is. Um, so I was like, hey, do you have a selfie? And he's like, you've got many selfies, but I can't snap some now because I'm in the base. I think I sent you the pic already. Do you want me to go to jail? This is like the lamest thing I've ever heard. This whole, I can't use social media on the base. I could go to jail. I can't take pictures right now. And yet he's on WhatsApp and offering to make payments. This is so hilarious. And I was like, this sounds kind of suspect to me. And he's all about what? I'm waiting. <laughs> like, Great job of building rapport, buddy. Uh, I said, I'm also waiting for a real picture. The selfie you sent me before was from March off another Instagram account. And I was like, I don't even know your real name. <laughs> so I decided I was going to try to catch him in some more lies. Um, and I decided to call out the lie again. And he stated that he was joking. The commitment to the terrible lie is something that completely blew me away. If this was me, I would have cut bait so long ago and moved on to another target. And this guy is still hanging out. It's been like a week. This whole thing has transpired over like a week and he's still not going to give up. He's still trying to dig himself out of the hole. And I've seen people do this on fishing calls too, where they're just like, no, this is totally legit. I'm definitely calling from where I say I'm calling from. And this is why. And it's like, dude, just hang up and call somebody else. Um, so anyway, I called him out again and he just says, all right, thanks. Every, like nothing was adding up here at all. Um, I think he accepted at this point that I knew that he was full of it. Um, and then he accused me of ruining his mood. And I was like, are you even the same person? <laughs> and I was, the next day I was like, are you there? And he's like, hi. I'm like, how are you today? And he's like, I'm okay. Thanks. <laughs> you think you're smart, right? LOL. And I was like, yeah, I do actually think I'm pretty smart. So did you talk to the real guy yet? You just out of your mind and wasting my time. So I was like, I'm out of my mind. <laughs> like, I'm wasting your time, buddy. I think it's the other way around. So I was like, this number says it belongs to a business account of a text message service provider. You were busted the moment you left Instagram and moved this conversation to WhatsApp. WhatsApp busted him. And I didn't point this out in the beginning, but as soon as I joined the WhatsApp conversation, it said messages and calls are, you know, encrypted end to end. 
blah, blah, blah. But then it says twice, this chat is with a business account. Tap to learn more. So you tap to learn more. Oops, whoops, go back. You tap to learn more and it says LeBron is registered as a business account. There's no personal user of WhatsApp where this would come up. It will always be connected to a real number and a personal account, unless it's like, you know, an Instagram personal trainer or something like that, who has a business account set up on WhatsApp to manage clients. In this case, especially since this is supposedly his alias account for while he's on base, there's no reason why this should have been set up as a business account in WhatsApp. Um, so I actually tried to flag this account and report it to WhatsApp. And they didn't do anything. Instagram didn't do anything with the original report of the original account. Um, and essentially, he stopped responding to me altogether. And somebody made this. I didn't make this, but I thought it was pretty hilarious. Um, so I wasted a decent amount of the, the team's time. Um, but I think we learned a ton about how this person a did their job really wrong but how they try to leverage some psychology to get people on the hook um usually in these cases anything that seems too good to be true probably is is the first thing that should tip your mind off whether you're in a facebook group and you've agreed to buy a car part and it's like 10 percent of what it should cost and they're like we'll ship it for 30 bucks and it's like a bumper of a car and they're selling it for like you know 20 or 30 percent of what it should cost to buy it that should be a ginormous red flag then if they say oh i can't do paypal you're gonna have to send me the money using imessage cash apple cash because i can't do paypal that's another ginormous red flag. Anything where you don't have protection, like buyer seller protection is a giant red flag, especially if they say, you know, I need like a cashier's check or something that's untraceable, gift cards, stuff like that. Um, anyone that professes love or starts using pet names like almost immediately, that should be a huge red flag for like romance scammers, this baby daddy BS. Um, anyone who claims to be from the US but currently overseas on business or in the military and unable to like send selfies or send pictures of themselves or that kind of stuff, also a giant red flag. Um, if they try to move the conversation from where they originally reached out to you and if they in fact reached out to you rather than you reaching out to them, it's another dynamic that you need to be mindful of. But if they try to move the conversation to iMessage or WhatsApp, they could be setting you up to give your phone number, setting you up to use Apple Cash to make a payment. Like, well, I can give you, you know, an advance, but I need to verify your bank account. So can you send me $100? Then I'll just send it right back to you kind of a thing. Um, they will most definitely have their Apple Cash account set to automatically accept payments. And once that money leaves your account, it is gone. You can't make a fraud claim nothing. Apple cash is essentially you dropping dollar bills on the ground and walking away from them. There's no way to get them back. Um, claims that they need money or they ask for money due to hardship or sickness or illness of a family member, like those kind of things, like big money amounts and needing money uh, really quickly for an emergency. They're trying to, you know, play on your tendency to want to help and be helpful and not giving you a lot of time to think about the logical implications and repercussions of you sharing that amount of money with somebody without any uh, guarantee for getting it back. Mm. And then people that ask for things like your social security number and your driver's license number and you know your address, your telephone number, those types of things. Um, this guy wanted it for payroll um, there's no scenario where anyone is going to put you on payroll for sugar baby payments. You are not paying tax on your sugar baby payments, I guarantee you. And the only reason they would need a social security number is for tax purposes. So that's all complete garbage. Um, so just be very keenly aware. Um, some of these scammers are a lot better at doing this than others. So they may not come out and directly ask you for your social security number. They may set you up 
to offer the information like, oh, I don't know how I can pay you for this. I'm using online payment service, but it's asking me for, you know, your information and then have you like, oh, do I need to like fill out a W-2 or what's going on here? Um, so those kind of types of things, you really want to be very keenly aware that you're not oversharing. Um, a lot of scammers will also ask you for smaller, more seemingly innocuous pieces of information and lead up to like the big money thing. This guy went straight for the jugular and was like, I need your social. But most people will be like, answer this small question, answer that small question, answer this small question, and then they'll escalate like more sensitive information. And then ultimate sensitive information is kind of the end of that logical progression of their questioning. And at that point, you've answered so many questions and you've got to the point where you're feeling like you're in a genuine friendship um, and you're less likely to challenge them or ask them to, you know, verify that they are who they say they are at that point, because you've already indicated that you believe them by complying up into that point. So that's kind of, I say, the, the top, top red flags that you should stay aware of for online scamming. Really, the first thing is anything that seems too good to be true almost most certainly is. And that's it for me. If you have any questions, I will absolutely stick around and answer those. Um, if you have any feedback for me, you're welcome to send that to me or share that with me here. Um, but you can send it to me on Twitter. It's just at Elite Dennis. My DMs are open. Um, I will absolutely point you in the direction of resources for social engineering. It really helps me to understand what your goals are, what you've accomplished as far as social engineering and what you're seeking. Um, if you can come to me and say, this is what I've done, this is what I'm hoping to accomplish, do you have any suggestions for where to go next? That's a lot uh, better for both of us than just saying, do you have any resources to share with me? Because nine times out of 10, I'm going to give you the same list of stuff you've already found, unless I know you've already found it. Um, and then I would also say that if you are wanting to get involved in your community and in social engineering specifically, I would encourage you to reach out to um, conferences and things where those uh, topics are being discussed and get involved with your local groups virtually until we can be in person, but DEF CON groups and other online groups can help you to, to get more familiar with the content and also make some great networking uh, happen to where you can learn more from folks that are also interested in the same things. All right, thank you, Elise. This was a really great talk, like really interesting. Um, is there anyone in the room that has any questions? Uh, feel free to unmute yourself um, and jump right in. Or you, or you can uh, also uh, put them in the chat too, if you don't want to I, talk. I, I, have, I have a little quick question. Um, so uh, I, I, I like to think of everything having a, some sort of financial motive behind uh, the, money, the, the old money drives everything sort of situation. Um, in the case of the scammer spending a, a week plus working on you to get your uh, you know, private information, social name, uh, address, et cetera. Um, what's what would you say that's worth? Like, what's what's their time worth? What's their what's the outcome that's worth their time? What's worth their time is getting my social, and I have a feeling that this was likely an identity theft ring. So they're trying to collect as many socials and phone numbers and as much personally identifiable information about their targets as possible, so that they can you know open credit cards and things like that against those socials. Um, that's what I suspect, I was really hoping that this person was going to be better at their job, to be frank, um, because we would have had a lot more opportunities to talk about uh, different tactics and things that he was using against me to try to get me to comply. Um, somebody asked in the chat if I wish I'd done anything differently. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I got a different guy. <laughs> but but I think, I think it all kind of went the way it was going to go, only because... Um, this person wasn't really skilled at moving the conversation forward and he really didn't apply pressure in the way that I had expected him to. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of, a lot of these same tactics are used by online predators that are trying to manipulate kids into sending them pictures and participating in stuff they probably shouldn't. 
Um, so I was hoping that I would be able to break down some of that as well. Um, let me scan here really quick for any questions. I don't see any new ones um, okay. that have come up. Any, any other questions we have in the room? Oh yeah. So, okay. uh, yeah, um, Instagram, like, they're not very good when it comes to, like, when it comes to, like, reporting stuff. So, like, most of the time, if you report stuff to Instagram, they really don't care much. So, I was wondering, if you come across, you know, uh, someone like that, like, what are some other ways you can report the person? You know, it's tough. I, um, you can go the traditional route and report it to the social media platform and just keep reporting it until they take notice. I don't know that there's anything that you can do as far as like being a social media vigilante to get it taken down. Um, but I would have as many people as possible join your cause and report it. And there's always a better chance of having your message heard if you have a large number of individuals reporting the same account around the same time. Um, that's gonna give them cause for, for taking a look at it. Thank you. Sure. You can also put comments in their pictures like this guy's a fake. <laughs> this is a fake account and just keep spamming their comments of all their stuff so that their accounts burned and then they can't use it. Yeah, crowd crowdsourcing the reporting via tweet is an excellent uh, way to do that. And that's something that I tried to do myself, like go report this account. Um, it can be very effective to have, you know, a couple hundred people go and report the same account. Um, anyone else? We still have a few few more minutes um, free. Uh, we just got another one. How would you recommend seeking employment for your profession? This is a question that I get all the time. It is pretty tough to get a job as a social engineer. I'm not going to lie. Um, you really need to figure out how you can work social engineering into the context of uh, another more broad role that suits your skill set. Um, I have kind of talked about this a few times on various podcasts. So I would absolutely recommend checking out the Hacker Factory podcast with Philip Wiley. Um, I just did a podcast with him about how folks can get in to information security, and it's all kind of the same, same method. Um, the best way to get a job doing social engineering is to have a list of skills that meets the requirements for the job that you are trying to get. So if you have an idea of what kind of job you're trying to get, I would encourage you to go on LinkedIn, Indeed, um, blast or look at job postings for that job title and see what skills and requirements they want and then try to make your resume match what they want. You don't have to be like super obvious about it, but if they're specifically asking for certain skills, gain those skills and then add them to your resume as you go. Um, you want to get you want to get into a role that's going to allow you to use social engineering. Typically, those are going to require a little bit of uh, pen testing capability, red teaming capabilities. Um, a a full-scale pen tester would use social engineering. Um, and you can look for, if you're just starting out, entry-level roles that will allow you to kind of get some on-the-job training. Um, you can start off in a SOC and move your way through being a SOC analyst into consulting. Um, we've had many people that have done that within Critical Insight where they start off in the SOC, they gain the skills, they go get you know, their OCP, they move into consulting. So that kind of career path is absolutely possible. Um, and you can, you can use your ability to network and social engineer people to build genuine relationships with folks that can help open doors for you. And that I can't stress enough. If you create genuine friendships within information security, they are going to come to you with a job that might be good for you rather than you having to go out there and hunt it. And that's precisely what happened to me. Okay. Um, a couple of questions. Someone wanted you to repeat the name of the podcast again. It's called The Hacker Factory with Philip Wiley. 
it is in the link in my bio on Twitter. So if you just hit up my link tree, it's in there and along with a bunch of other podcasts. Um, the breadcrumbs, breadcrumbs podcast from Trace Labs. There's also a link for that one. I think we talk about in part two, we talk about getting into this as a job. Uh, and Henry uh, dropped the link for it in the chat too. Uh, thank you, yeah. Henry. And then I got two questions in a private chat. The first is, are you planning on doing more scammer analysis again? And are you noticing any changes in the way scammers operate in terms of like problematic English or grammar, uh, but they're better in other ways, like if they're problematic with their grammar, but more tech savvy um, or vice versa? So I don't know if I'll do this again. I think if the opportunity presented itself, I might only in the hopes of getting somebody that was a little bit more efficient. <laughs> Maybe we could break this down a little bit better in the future. Um, but as far as like improvements, the thing that I want to highlight is that these scammers are moving from email where everybody's kind of got their guard up and they know about phishing emails and they understand about the Nigerian prince pretexts and Todd from IT and all that stuff. They're kind of moving this stuff off of email because it's untrusted and they're transitioning over into social media, like with a vengeance. So anything that comes to you through your LinkedIn direct messages, your Instagram, Twitter, you know, anywhere that you are on social media, you should kind of be a little guarded with how you communicate with people that approach you, especially if you've never spoken to them before, if they're in your DMs offering you something, even if it's a job. And I know that that's tricky, but I had an incident last year um, when I was job hunting, I set my LinkedIn to open to work and I had a recruiter from a ginormous bank reach out to me and I checked the profile. It was a legitimate paid recruiter account on LinkedIn from a person who had a full history of activities on LinkedIn. It was 100% a legit profile. And the message that they sent me was, I've got the perfect job for you. We just need you to apply for it. Go check out this job rec. And I was like, oh, wow, that's so neat. So I clicked the link <laughs> and I did it from a device that, you know, whatever. So I clicked the link and it took me straight to an Office 365 login page. And at that point, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is definitely a fish. <laughs> they didn't tell me the job title. They just said it was perfect for this mystery job. Right. So that's kind of your first clue is it's very generic messaging. And then getting hit with an Office 365 login page, they're trying to fish my O365 credentials um, from me to view the job rec. And doing it from a legitimate recruiter account, like a paid LinkedIn account that they had compromised. Um, so I thought that was pretty ridiculously good on their part. They'd compromised the account, taken it over, and were sending out, I'm sure, hundreds of these link-filled messages to folks that were in a position where they were either open to work or maybe even desperate for a job to the point where, you know, that glimmer of hope that they could be perfect for this role at this giant bank may get them to you know, click the link and put their credentials in without even thinking about it because they're hoping that you're like on your work computer where putting those credentials in would feel safe and normal. Um, I had a client last week that they had a, a person within their organization who clicked on a phishing link, put in their Office 365 credentials, and then went as far as to approve the authenticator app request for the multi-factor authentication just because in the context of their job, this felt normal. And the pretext of the email was good enough that they just thought, yeah, this is fine. I put my password in, I got the MFA, I approved that, we're doing our job, everything's fine. And I wanna stress that, you know, just because you have multi-factor authentication does not mean that you're safe from social engineering. And I even had the client say like, why did this happen? We have MFA, this is supposed to be the answer. And I'm like, it doesn't really work that well if you don't train your folks to be wary of the fish and approve the thing. Because what MFA does is it stops things like credential phishing, where if they have your password, they try to stuff it in to another application or that application to gain access and it'll block it. So you can stop credential stuffing with MFA, sure. But if somebody's being vished or they are successfully fished over email, it's 
you know, it's rough. You're going to have folks that fall prey to this and it just takes the wrong day, the wrong time, the wrong mood that you're in to fall victim to these. Um, when I was just like very, very newly interested in InfoSec, I received a phone call from a woman that was like, oh yeah, I'm calling from your wireless provider and we're putting a credit on your bill. Just need your four digit pin number. And I was like, hadn't even finished my cup of coffee. It's early on Monday morning. I wasn't really thinking. I just trying to get to the next thing. And I was like, sure, the four digit code is this. And she's like, oh, thank you very much. You know, you'll see the credit on your next bill. Talk to you later. And she hangs up and I'm like, that was weird. <laughs> and I called my wireless provider and was like, hey, I just got a call about this. And they're like, okay, we would never call you for that. And I was like, yeah, I figured, can we change my PIN number real quick? And I managed to change the PIN number before anything negative happened, but they actually called me back and they're like, oh, it looks like you gave us the wrong PIN number. Can you give us the PIN number again? And I was like, listen, buddy. <laughs> so anyone, anyone can fall prey to these. They were spoofing the customer service number of the wireless provider. They were, they sounded like they were in the call center, in the offshore call center that this wireless provider uses that I know that they use. Um, it's something that really propelled me into social engineering as a result of that experience. Cause I'm like, I am never falling victim to this garbage again. And if I can help it, I'm going to make sure nobody else does either. If you wouldn't mind, would you mind giving another example or two of how um, uh, social media based social engineering attacks um, affect the corporate environment? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a term de minimis use, uh, which basically means when people use devices that are company issued for their own personal use. And I cannot stress enough how important it is for you to completely by policy and technically if possible, restrict de minimis use on company issued devices because I can have all the filtering and all the things and everything perfectly set up and secure in your work email, for example. But if employee logs into their Gmail on their work computer and clicks on a link, it's all over. So I would very much encourage folks to keep social media activity, all of that stuff off of your company machines, your school devices, Use your personal devices for those things. You do not want to be the person that's responsible for a compromise or an incident. Um, people are getting pretty savvy with crafting these scams. The sugar baby one's a little obvious. I mean, who's going to pay you $3,000 a week? No one. Especially if they can't even tell you what they expect from you. Um, but make sure that you're not clicking on links, short links. Um, early on, we saw a lot of messages for social media related scams that were like, um, you know, so-and-so has tagged you in a picture on Facebook, click here to approve it or untag yourself. And a lot of people will need jerk reaction. Like, what do you mean I'm in a picture on Facebook? I haven't seen yet. And they'll immediately click on those. Um, social media and text messages have just been rampant with scams lately. Um, it's really, really easy for attackers to set these scams and text messages, especially up to go out automatically, and they can really automate the entire process and just hit a giant list of, you know, successive numbers and just spray and pray. Um, somebody clicks on a link. Um, but for social media scams, I'd say a lot of them really focus on the romance angle. Um, for things like Instagram, I would also be a little bit weary of folks that are selling things that they don't allow you to pay through a, um, a payment method that gives you buyer protection and seller protection. Like if you're going to pay with PayPal, make sure you're paying with goods and services. Do not pay using friends and family. If they say, well, you can't pay with goods and services because I don't want to pay the fees say, sure, I'll pay the fee. It's like four bucks. I'll pay the fee and send you the money, goods and services, because you want the buyer protection. And the reason for that is if they don't send the thing that you bought, you can go back to PayPal and say, hey, they were supposed to send me this, file a claim, and they'll pull that money back and give it back to you. But if you send it friends and family, there's no protection whatsoever. Um, so that's how, how I would kind of protect yourself from the money side. As far as the romance scam thing and just having your emotions toyed with, 
that's something that you need to get a little bit of experience with, you know, kind of protecting your heart, so to speak. Um, don't want to believe that something is true so badly that you don't allow yourself to think about it in a critical and analytical way to see if things are adding up. Ask a lot of questions, ask for pictures, ask to talk on the phone. Um, I had a friend of mine that was in a, like a car club kind of an idea, a Facebook group, and they were going to buy a car part and they spoke to the person on the phone. They were super excited about buying this car part. It was such a good deal. And they got nearly to the end of it and they're like, okay, now they've like dragged this thing out for like two days. And they're like, you know, here's the price. I just need the money and I can get the ship to you. Here's a picture of the item sitting in my uncle's shop. And here's a picture of me and this is where I am. And you can call me on this number and like all this stuff added up. And it gets to the end and the person's like, yeah, I don't use PayPal. I can only use Apple cash. And they're like, okay, well, I have never used Apple cash before. Um, you know, I guess I can do that. So they set up an account, put a debit card in and sent the cash. And uh, the following day, they find out that 10 other people across two or three other car parts groups got scammed by the same person to buy the same bumper. And they were all scammed out of large amounts of money, like $750, $850, $900. Like this person cleaned house in an afternoon. And it just left the person that had been scammed feeling completely sick to their stomach because, you know, you try to file a claim with the bank and they're like, there's nothing I can do here. This isn't fraud. You gifted the money to them essentially, um, which is even worse. So um, as far as social media scams go, just guard yourself. It's, it's too easy for humans to feel like they're part of a tribe and attribute trust to the people that are in the same tribe. So like you're in a group for people that like chickens, I automatically attribute the trust that I have for myself as part of that tribe to all these other people. I trust them the same as I trust myself because we're the same, we're in the same group, we like the same things, we have all this stuff in common. And then you layer on the fact that people, most people trust large companies like LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram, they trust them. So that trust kind of gets inherited to any of the users that are on the platform. Unfortunately, you're more likely to trust a message that comes to you through social media than you are to trust a message that comes to you through email and sometimes now even text message. So that's something to just kind of keep in mind. And I'm going to wrap it up there because I know we've got three minutes left and I want to be conscious of everyone's time. Um, so I think we're, we're going to stop the questions just because it's so close to the end. And I know we have a few folks in here who have to get to another class. Um, but I would like to say thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for coming. This was super interesting, super cool. Um, I'd also like to thank all of the other cybersecurity professionals that came in. I saw a lot of people shouting out their DEF CON teams and everything in the chat. I know we have the founder of Racist Cybersecurity in here, Mr. Bellardo. So thank you so much for coming to join us. Um, and please, if you are interested in learning more about this, please follow up on the resources that um, both Alif and Henry shared. And don't forget to follow her on Twitter for more um, exploits in her social engineering. <laughs> um, so with that being said, I'm going to let everyone go and have a good day. Thanks, Alif. And, uh, enjoy your weekend. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much for coming. This was so entertaining. And have a insightful. great day, everybody. All right, everyone, have a good one. Thanks, you too. Also, um, we'll announce our next talk a little, a little, the next Wesis talk um, in a few weeks. Uh, we're still working out some logistics. Um, 
I'm not sure when the recording is going to be available. I have to work out the logistics with Dr. Reggae, but I'm sure it will be soon. Um, she's having some technical issues, so she can't answer any questions. Um, actually, Ancho, you're not muted anymore. No, I know my oh. whole com a computer was frozen during this whole thing, and I was like, if I click anything right now, it's going to disappear. Do you know when we're going to post the recording for this? I will try this weekend, at most next weekend, no later. Okay. Um, All right, uh, I think we should X out. Uh, Elise, thank you again. I'll be in touch soon. Um, and to the folks who are remaining here. We're just gonna close out the room. Everyone have a good day. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, right. take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.